Hey everybody, in this video we're going to cover four things. What ADHD stands for, what ADHD means, what ADHD looks like, as well as common ADHD symptoms, and how to get your child tested for ADHD. For those of you who don't know, ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which is actually a misleading name because you don't have to be hyperactive to have it, and people with ADHD don't have an attention deficit, it's just that regulating their attention is difficult, which can either make it hard for them to focus on one thing or can make them hyper-focused on one thing. So what does it mean? ADHD is a medical condition, more specifically a neurodevelopmental disorder. It is not a myth or made up excuse by parents of naughty kids. If you've ever had to deal with that kind of scrutiny, let me know what happened in the comments below. Now a person with ADHD has visible differences in brain development and brain activity that affect their attention, emotional regulation, and self-control. There are three types of ADHD. Type 1, the inattentive type, which people used to call ADD, are children who are not overly active, have a hard time keeping their mind focused on one thing, and may get bored with a task after only a few minutes. They do not disrupt the classroom or other activities, so their symptoms are harder to notice. Type 2, the hyperactive impulsive type, are children who show both hyperactive and impulsive behaviors. Hyperactive behaviors can be children who always seem to be in motion, can't sit still, and may dash around or talk incessantly. Impulsive behaviors can be children who seem unable to think before they act, blurt out answers to questions or inappropriate comments, or run into the street without looking. Their impulsivity may make it difficult for them to wait for things they want or take their turn in games. They may grab a toy from another child or hit others when they are upset. They often have difficulty making and keeping friends. However, children with type 2 ADHD may be hyperactive and impulsive, but may also be able to pay attention for the most part. Type 3, which is the most common, is a combination of both types. Children with the combined type of ADHD show both categories of symptoms, which means they would be inattentive, hyperactive, and impulsive. That's a lot for anyone to handle, let alone a child. So how can you tell if your child has ADHD? To recap, some of the most common symptoms include being in constant motion, squirming and fidgeting, getting easily sidetracked or distracted, being disorganized or frequently forgetful, having trouble playing quietly, often talking excessively, interrupting or intruding on others, acting impulsively, or consistently not finishing tasks. But before jumping to any conclusions, keep in mind that diagnosing ADHD isn't quite that simple. On their own, none of the symptoms of attention deficit disorder are abnormal. Most people feel scattered, unfocused, or restless at times. Even chronic hyperactivity or distractibility doesn't necessarily equal ADHD. In general, a child shouldn't receive a diagnosis of attention deficit or hyperactivity disorder unless the core symptoms of ADHD start early in life, before age 12, and create significant problems at home and at school on an ongoing basis. Although signs of ADHD can sometimes appear in preschoolers or even younger children, diagnosing the disorder in very young children is difficult because developmental problems such as language delays can be mistaken for ADHD. So children preschool age or younger suspected of having ADHD are more likely to need evaluation by a specialist, such as a psychologist or a psychiatrist, speech pathologist, or developmental pediatrician. To determine if you or your child has ADHD, you need to speak with a doctor or other health professional, and you can expect them to use a number of different tools. A checklist of symptoms, like the ADHD criteria from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, or DSM-5, published by the American Psychiatric Association, ADHD rating scales to help collect and evaluate information about your child, information gathering such as any current medical issues, personal and family medical history, and school records, interviews or questionnaires for family members, your child's teachers, or other people who know your child well such as caregivers, babysitters, and coaches, or a medical exam to rule out other causes for symptoms. Keep in mind that the symptoms of ADHD, such as concentration problems and hyperactivity, can be confused with 
other disorders and medical problems, including learning disabilities and emotional issues, which require totally different treatments. Just because it looks like ADHD doesn't mean it is ADHD, so getting a thorough assessment and diagnosis is important. The mental health professional assessing the problem should also look at the following factors. How severe are the symptoms? To be diagnosed with ADHD, the symptoms must have a negative impact on your child's life. In general, children who truly have ADHD have major problems in one or more areas of their life, such as academically at school, in their social lives, or with their families. When did the symptoms start? Since ADHD starts in childhood, the doctor or therapist should look at how early the symptoms appeared. How long have the symptoms been bothering your child? Symptoms must have been going on for at least six months before ADHD can be diagnosed. When and where do the symptoms appear? The symptoms of ADHD must be present in multiple settings, such as at home and at school. If the symptoms only appear in one environment, it is unlikely that ADHD is to blame. Now, finding specialists or qualified professionals who can diagnose ADHD can include clinical psychologists, physicians, or clinical social workers. Choosing a specialist can seem confusing at first, but the following steps can help you find the right person to evaluate your child. Get recommendations. Doctors, therapists, and friends you trust may refer you to a particular specialist. Ask them questions about their choice and try out their recommendation. Two, do your homework. Find out the professional certification and academic degrees of the specialists you are looking into. If possible, talk to former patients and clients and find out what their experience was. Three, feel at ease. Feeling comfortable with the specialist is an important part of choosing the right person to evaluate you. Try to be yourself, ask questions, and be honest with the professional. You may need to speak with a few specialists before finding the right person who is best for you and your child. Four, check the price and insurance coverage. Find out how much the specialist will charge and if your health insurance will cover part or all of the ADHD evaluation. Some insurance policies cover evaluation for ADHD from one kind of specialist, but not from another. Now, you should know how to find a specialist and get your child the diagnosis they need. But what the specialist tells you and what they recommend is an entirely different thing. That's what we'll cover in next week's video based on the findings of the Mayo Clinic. I am not a doctor, so I will not give you any medical advice. Still, it helps to hear what the experts suggest. So, if you want to be notified when we publish that video, please click the little notification bell under this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it, subscribe, and let us know what you liked or what you'd like to see more of in the comments below. The more people like, subscribe, click the bell, and comment, the more people will see this kind of content on YouTube, and we know some people could really use the help. If you're looking for more help, I'd also recommend joining our expert vetted newsletter. It'll be free until October 3rd, 2019, so don't wait up. Our resources will help you find answers to your basic questions about ADHD, understand why middle school is so challenging for students with ADHD, and introduce you to ADHD support groups and other sites to help you meet your child's needs at school and at home. Visit the links in the description and on your screen. You can also join our own ADHD education and support group for parents where you can get direct help from other parents with shared experiences. Thanks again for watching and see you next week.